Hello everyone, I'm Shubh and you're watching F1 Error Nemesis. For those of you who are new to my channel, a quick background check. I work with the Red Bull Racing team for the 2021 and the 2022 season as a student placement aerodynamicist. And this has given me some insights into the world of F1 aerodynamics. And my objective with this aero analysis series is to give you those insights. So let's dive into it then. So before starting this video, I really want to say thank you so much for all the love and support you guys have shown me over the last couple of videos. Um, I was very skeptical of talking about this online and a bit fearful also, but your love and support has made, has encouraged me to come up with more such videos so that you guys can learn along with me. And we are all on this journey of learning about F1 aerodynamics and I'm happy to share my knowledge with you all. So in this video, we're gonna look at the Mercedes W14 side pod because some legend on F1 technical, I mean, people who follow F1 technical know this guy pretty well, Mr. Wanja has been able to do some crude CFD analysis of the W14 side pods to show us what the winglet, that is the cis tube, which is used as a wing uh, is doing uh, and what the vortex that it's producing, what is doing at the rear of the car, what is doing to the rear wing and what is doing to the tire and also the famous um, extended halo uh, engine cover, the top part, what effect that is having onto the rear of the car too. So let's dive into it then. So let us begin by having a look at the CP distribution on the W14, which is the image on the top and the W13, which is the image at the bottom. And what you can immediately see is because of the shape of the side pod, the CP distribution on the side pod itself is quite different. Again, another factor that will come into this is the vortex that is going to be generated by the wing tip itself. And we'll talk a bit more about this later on. But what you can see here is that the W14 side pod would generate a bit more lift because you have a um, bit more suction on the top as compared to the W13 one in which you have almost like a discrete region of low pressure and high pressure but overall the W14 side pod would land up generating more lift and now you would say that hey that's not a nice thing to have just just to remind you guys all side pods produce some amount of lift and teams yes do try to minimize it but the question is at what cost over here, it looks like Mercedes are okay for producing a little bit of extra lift on the side pods as long as the flow conditioning to the rear end of the car is beneficial for them. And the other thing that really stands out from this image is the pressure distribution on the rear tire itself. So you can see that uh, on the W13, you have a large region of high pressure. Uh, just to show that a bit better to you guys, you can see this region here. While on the W14, that stagnation pressure has drastically reduced. So this kind of indicates to me um, better wheel wake management. So what would this result in? This would definitely result in reducing the rear tire drag uh, because you have less of a high pressure region facing in front of the tire. So that is the stagnation of the tire in itself has changed quite a lot. Um, might not be super representative, but there are signs that this would be one of the effects of this concept. And this is just not because of the side pod, but this change has a lot to do with this element here. That is what we are calling right now is the mid wing on the W14 because you know, you have the front wing, you have the rear wing. And now since we, since Mercedes have used the entire cis tube, like a wing in itself, we are calling this the mid wing. Right, so let us have a look at what this mid wing is doing and it's having some big effects onto the car. So you can see that um, this mid wing, first of all, is a down washing element. This really shows that it is a wing and it has quite a lot of platform. And again, it's producing a lot of lift in its own right because it's down washing. You can see the lower pressure across the entire top surface of the mid wing. But I think what Mercedes are using this for is to kind of uh, drive the vortex that comes from that mid wing and try and manage the front wheel wake. And by managing that front wheel wake uh, is where you'll end up getting the benefit of reducing the stagnation pressure on that tire. Another thing that stands out quite noticeably with this feature on the car, that is the halo continued radii transition uh, to have the engine cover 
as flat and then down washing um, at the end as you can see from this figure here you know they are not flat but they land up down washing um, but over here they look flat is if you see the amount of pressurization that goes onto the rear wing so your rear wing uh, is producing a lot more downforce because you're kind of delivering high energy air to the rear of the car now some of you guys might say hey that's going to make the car draggy and yes it is going to make the car draggy but it is a drag that you can control uh, remember the drag on the tire is not something that you have a lot of control over With the drag over the rear wing you can just crank the rear wing down um, and you have more control over the drag on the rear wing and you know this makes the rear wing more powerful in its own right so on tracks such as monaco where you want to have the highest downforce possible you don't care about the drag this would be very very effective so again this is a quite cool feature that you can uh, very evidently see very quickly let's look at images further to see what this vortex system does for us so let us have a look at what the vortex from the mid wing does uh, and why Mercedes have stuck with this concept, even though a lot of its competitors have stuck to its wide side pod uh, concept, right? So in terms of um, its path and trajectory, you can see that this vortex travels along the contour of the side pod and lands up somewhere between the inside face of the rear tire, that is this bit, and below the rear wing. You cannot exactly say where this vortex would land up because again the CFD is quite rude so its vortex position would change in height but let us try and speculate at what would some of the uses of this vortex be and what gives Mercedes the confidence. So the first thing that this vortex allows you to do is to treat the front wheel wake and let us try and speculate how that works right. So imagine this is a slice over here behind the tire so you have the front wheel wake that say looks roughly like this. Now imagine you land up putting a vortex here. What you land up doing is you are outwashing all of this. Uh, that's the top part of the wheel wake. And that is very beneficial because this allows you, sorry, uh, this allows you to ensure that the wheel wake, uh, the top half of the front wheel wake does not latch on to the bodywork and make it to the rear half of the car. Like everyone spoken on the internet, it's not a nice thing to have because if the wheel wake makes it uh, between the bodywork and the rear tire, then you know the flow conditioning to the rear end of the car is quite poor. And then the diffuser performance is quite poor because of that. But the backdrop of this, I mean, everybody would want to do it, right? But the backdrop of this is that when you land up out washing the top wheel wake, you land up in washing, the lower wheel wake and this obviously can make it into the floor if not treated properly and that's why i think that's where mercedes front wing concept comes in because they have um, discontinuous tips and i've made a video of the front wing uh, discontinuous tips and how they work so do check it out if you haven't checked it out yet but what that allows you to do is it gives you good low wheel wake management and also there is a lot of outwash that is produced by the straight designs that Mercedes have. So you can see that they have quite an aggressive turning of the outer wing. So of course they are aware that this clocking of the wake would happen and that way they are able to kind of very effectively uh, deal with the front wheel wake uh, by using the mid wing uh, vortex and by using the outer fence and also by using the front wing tip vortex which is which in my opinion is quite effective at treating the lower wheel wake. So that is what this vortex does to almost the front half of the car. Um, now let us try and see what it would do to the rear end of the car. So if you see the velocity contours of the W14 at Y500, what you can immediately notice is that it allows you to draw high energy flow from free stream to the gap between the inside face of the rear tire and the diffuser and what you can see is this can have a lot of benefits because um, in this case you will end up delivering a lot of high energy air to the rear corner and that has potential benefits in terms of squish management and also in terms of um, delivering high energy air over the top of the diffuser which can allow for more diffuser expansion as i kind of spoke about this in my aston martin video so you can check that out uh, also in case you want to understand how delivering high energy air to the rear end of the car lands up giving you more diffuser expansion.
Also, I'd like to speculate that if you're able to put position this vortex slightly lower onto the tire, you'd be able to get potential additional benefits. And I'd like to show how. So imagine this is the rear tire and this is the inside face of the tire. So if you're able to put a vortex to the inside face of to the tire, what you'll end up doing is you'll end up creating local upwash here, local downwash here, which remember can be used by your rear suspension arms, um, depending on how you've designed them. And you'll end up creating inwash here. Now, this is quite good because this inwash would allow you to effectively manage this the tire squirt and suppress it, which lands up normally going into the diffuser because of the uh, drop in pressure around the diffuser. So you can manage, you can reduce the tire squirt from entering into the diffuser. So this is a rear tire squirt management system in a way. And adding this local upwash onto the inside face of the rear tire can allow you to separate the tire a bit earlier. So you can imagine that if you're adding upwash on a cylindrical surface, then that upwash would tend to separate the tire earlier than if that upwash wasn't present. And what that does is it can reduce the lift produced by the rear tire. And I can't exactly comment on how this would help you in terms of uh, more diffuser expansion, but I'm pretty sure that um, if you are able to separate the tire earlier, then what would happen is you would normally land up getting some kind of beneficial flow characteristic, which would allow you to push your diffuser uh, a bit more for expansion, but I do not know how that mechanism would work. My best guess would be because, you know, the tire separation is a very three dimensional phenomena. If you land up, um, if you land up improving the lower wheel wake, something happens on the upper wheel wake. If you land up improving the inboard, something happens on the outboard. My best guess is whatever wake characteristics that they're getting from uh, separating the tire earlier is beneficial for them to expand the diffuser a bit more or to reduce uh, lift in itself, that kind of um, generates to overall downforce because you're producing less lift from the tire, right? Cool CFB analysis done by Wanja Hasnovic. Uh, sorry, Wanja, if I'm kind of pronouncing a name wrong, but respect to you. And I hope that um, this video has kind of given you a better insight into what's actually happening aerodynamically onto the W14 and why Mercedes have stuck with their concept and not gone uh, around copying other people's concept which is quite cool because we have different cars and it's going to make for exciting competition i hope you've learned a lot from this video um, give me a like and a subscribe if you have and uh, stay tuned for more exciting videos on aerodynamics like this thank you